I've got the answer right here, ladies and gentlemen, to everything that ails you. Now step right up. One who quacks like a duck about his salves and remedies. The cruel practice of making money on people's worries feared throughout the years as quackery. I said cured. A backache, All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is the moment you've been waiting for. We're back for season two of Quackery, and we have a, a, a full fucking house today. Uh, we got Dr. Will the Pill, uh, the Quack Master. We got John Boy in the house. Uh, we got um, Birdman, mm-hmm. a doctor of holistic dental medicine. An expert, uh, what the hell is that game you play on your iPod right now? My iPod? I don't play anything on iPod. I haven't had an iPod in years. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I don't think iPods had games, did they? Oh, sure. iPod Touch? You didn't have one? Uh, no. I guess you were rich. You had an iP- iPhone. I was rich. <laughs> All right there, Zuckerberg. <laughs> and that's Birdman. And uh, then we have Marv or? Marvin. Cheech. Marvin. Marvin, excuse me. Marvin. That's all. That's uh but you go only go by Marv in, in Dungeons and Dragons. That's correct. Okay, good. <laughs> all right. So we got we got the full deck today and we're welcoming you guys back to uh for season 2 after a short hiatus here. And we're very excited to tell you we have a sponsor. Wow. Ah. Holy shit. Okay, so you know back way back in season 1, you know back when we we're all young and covid free, uh we did an episode on CBD. How, you know, it's good, bad, ugly. You, you can't, you know, you got to make sure to find something that's a legitimate product. So what actually happened was mutually uh, contacted this company called Jupiter and they're USDA certified organic, all kind of tested. And we actually got free samples sent by them. They were like, hey guys, you know, can we send you some samples? You try it out. John and I got some samples and uh, the stuff is legit. It's, I mean, you, you can't get a USDA, you know, or, or certified organic, you know, just willy nilly, right? I mean, as far as I understand, no, there's pretty, uh, pretty strange, a lot I mean, of hoops to jump through. That's so okay. So yeah, so it's legit stuff. Um, so if you guys go to if if you use CBD and uh, this stuff is really legit, it's a it's a sublingual. You put the drops on your tongue, tastes real minty. It's delicious. You, go. you can go to quackery dot and uh, and you guys will be able to get yours today. Um, you'll be able to get a discount if you use the code Quackery. You'll get twenty percent off your first purchase. And so, if you subscribe, you can still get you get the uh, you know get the benefits coming to your house. Everyone likes a good subscription service, so check it out. You guys will be supporting us and actually getting an awesome product. So let's get going with the episode here. So at the request of Birdman, we are talking <laughs> about chiropractors today. Oh God, no chiropractors! <laughs> We're gonna get smeared for this one, aren't we? Yep. <laughs> yeah. They're pretty outspoken, right? Pretty much. Well, let's do this. Let's uh let's start with like an open mind. Whether you think chiropractors are awesome, John Boy. Yeah. Or well, I, you, know, I mean, you I think that one. they're fake or in, anywhere in between. We'll start from a position of of being a learner and wanting to wanting to know more. Well, they are real. They exist. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I agree. I'm they starting are, from there. They are real. They are real, <laughs> but what what they do, you know, whether it's, you know, you think it's beneficial, whether you think they're just charlatans or, or what have you, we'll, we'll go down this road together. All right. Hold my hand and let's learn. Uh, sounds good to me. Okay. All right. Everyone crack your knuckles here, right? <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> All right. So what is chiropractic? So um, according to the Mayo Clinic, they said chiropractic adjustment is a procedure in which trained specialists, or also known as chiropractors, use their hands or small instruments to apply a controlled, sudden force to a spinal joint. The goal of this procedure, also known as spinal manipulation, is to improve spinal motion and improve your body's physical function. So they're they're adjusting your spine. So not 32, there's 33. You know, you don't, nobody counts the tailbone. That thing can go fuck off. I don't think that's <laughs> it. Coxics. The cock six. I'm a coxman. <laughs> Um. <laughs> so that is the, the the spine. Anyway, 
That's what they focus on is the spine only. Right? We all get that? Correct. Well, what about the neck, though? They do the, the neck. Spine. That's the spine. That's the spine. Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you've got uh, the first one, I think it's called the atlas, which is the, the, the top vertebrae that attaches from your the, the base of your skull to your, I guess, the rest of your spinal cord. It's considered one of your spinal uh, bones, I guess. And then from there, it's just like uh, interconnecting little bones that go all the way down that are cylinder and shape-ish. Mm-hmm. With muscle attachments, and your spinal cord runs right down the middle of it, and you have little uh, uh, nerves that run off the spinal cord and run and do run all your your, your bodily, you know, muscles, and they, it regulates a lot of different things. That's your that's your broadband connection to the brain. For yeah, the body yeah. So you got your spot your spine, which is you know most people think of the bone itself, but you also have got the the nerve and the you know all your nerves run through there, except the ones you do have a couple called your cranial nerves that run. Um, directly from your skull that most mainly innervate things around your face, but things in your body, basically from your neck down, are all uh, controlled by your spinal cord, or it goes through your spinal cord before it gets to your brain. So a lot of stuff runs through there. It is definitely a, a central hub, so to speak, for nerves. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So uh, let's start here first, actually. Who all has been to a chiropractor? I have not. Uh, John Bo- John Boy has. Oh, I raised my hand. I, uh, I know the listeners can't see me <laughs> raise my hand. <laughs> I saw it. I'll call on you. Yeah. I know. With four people here, everyone's being very polite. Oh yeah. What the fuck's wrong well, with we're you? We're not drunk yet. <laughs> oh, that is true. That is true. Season two already re- rowdy start. <laughs> All right. So John Boy and, and Marvin have. Yes, I have two. Oh, so everyone but me. Everybody. All right. So why don't we? Why don't y'all tell us what the hell you know your experience was with it? I mean, I have a good experience with it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the VA pays. So for you it, so. go, you go for back problems, and the VA pays for it. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, how I, often you go? Well, I they paid for like twenty sessions or no forty sessions. Oh, I can't remember. But sweet. so I was going, and I felt pretty good, you yeah. know. So you're done with all your sessions now. Yeah, but it's okay. it's one of those things where you have to keep going. No. You think? <laughs> That's the thing about the holistic dent- dentistry. I never have to go back. To, they don't call me every six months to make me go to Birdman's Dental. <laughs> that is true. But I mean, with... I felt pretty good after, yeah. you know? Yeah. She, the, the lady I was going to was also, she also tried to get me to sign up to many different things that you have done on your podcast. Okay, and we'll get to that. Yeah, including. Well, I think the I, one thing you I haven't do want done you to is get into this alkaline water. Let's, she tried yeah, to. let's save that because that, that, I want to talk about all of this <laughs> I don't stuff. Want to for that yeah, no, this is all. No, I, I, this is the reason I wanted to do this episode is because you guys can see what I call the extracurriculars, and that's a that's going to be basically like the second half of this uh, episode. So stay tuned. But I want to start with what they're what what they initially get you in there for is cracking your back, right? Uh, so Birdman, what, 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 what happened with your experience there? Uh, well, I mean, you went for me, an injury or no, me and me and Marvin, Marvin, right? Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> we both went when we were in high school because, uh, we were uh, both cyclists and one of the guys that we rode in a group with was a chiropractor and he offered to do free treatments because he thought it would improve our cycling abilities or something. I'm not real sure why. Um, and so did me, it? me and me and I'll tell you the why. exact same experience. Uh, and from, from my experience is what, this is just, like I said, I, I'm not, I'm not never taking any chiropractic courses or anything like that. But from my perspective, they, they lay you on the table and then they have you move your hips around and then they see that one of your feet's longer than the other. And it's totally based on how I'm moving my hips. But anyway, th- it'll be like half an inch longer and they'll say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely longer, which I mean, I guess if you position your hips that way, it's definitely longer. So then they get some, the, the guy that we had had some machine that came in and got right on that first vertebrae, I guess, and made little taps on it, I guess. I don't know, like it just touched my muscle more than anything. And then they remeasured and said, all right. And then he shifted my hips back the other way where now it looked like they were aligned. And they said, okay, yeah, things are looking a lot. And this is free treatment. So like this guy didn't try to manipulate me for money. So this guy, I, you know, this is this is, At least not in this treatment. Right. And so, and, and so you know, he's, I mean, this is, uh, and so he, he gets me back in line, and then he goes, yeah, all right, so that's looking better. Um, and then he goes, and then I get, a, uh, like, a whole back massage by some masseuse he has in the back. 
Was she hot? Uh, I don't think so. I don't remember. It's been a long time. You were laying face down, I guess, yeah, so you don't so, get the look. And, and that felt great. I felt great for the massage. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that was, and then we had a couple of sessions, and that was really about it. Interesting. For me. And I, I don't. That, that's that was my perspective on it completely. Hmm. Obviously, I have a very similar take, uh, considering it was the same guy doing the same thing. Uh, but, but your pants were on. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> uh, again, my it, my experience was I have no clue what they were doing except for the massage part, and that was nice. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I think that's probably I mean, we'll talk about what the benefits are and stuff, but that's just my personal experience. OK, cool. Yeah, no, I haven't been. Um, I'm not against, uh, you know, giving it a try. Um, I just, you know, have other things I could spend money on right now. Uh, so we'll start with the, obviously when they did it, uh, John, boy, they probably uh, you probably got your back cracked a lot, right? Popped mm-hmm, it. Yeah. Do you know what that that is? That sound? <clears throat> um. It's in a fluid releasing or something. Yeah, or, so I mean, there, I did pee a little there's bit. There's actually gases within, oh, okay. yeah, within your within your joints. So when you crack it, you're basically letting these <clears throat> gases release, and that's what the popping is <clears throat> in your, uh, yeah, in your synovial fluid that's coming out. Which is, um, you know, so people think like, oh, you crack your fingers, you let that out, and then it'll slowly go back in there, and then you can't crack them for a little while. I mean, honestly. you feel a lot better, like especially the neck when they do it. It you is know. it's pleasurable to yeah. to to crack a and pop a you know pop a joint um, and then also anytime you move joints tendons and ligaments sometimes they can um, they can make a, a snapping a sound when they're rubbing against each other or if they're tight that also can happen so it's not always just fluid like if you walk up the stairs and your me and your knees go crack 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 right that's a different thing than the than the uh, the popping you hear from the gases. All right, so we'll start with who started it. Uh, we've talked about this gentleman here, old D.D. Palmer. Now, John Boy, you remember what episode D.D. Palmer came up in? Uh, you probably won't remember. Don't. Oh, Palmer, Con- didn't one of the, um, someone get a degree from that school? I don't know. I can't remember. No, I don't. So we did an episode on magnets, and he started off with magnets. He was the guy who would put like a magnet over top of you, a magnet below you, mm-hmm. and he tried all the magnet stuff. Well, he found out people didn't really care about that, you know, because they, you know, wasn't as easy to see what was going on. So he switched over to chiropractic. He invented it, oh. so to speak. So his first patient was a deaf janitor who could miraculously hear after Palmer adjusted his spine. Nice. It's pretty good. Yeah, it is. I mean, he's like Jesus. (laughs) Scales fell from his ears. There's literally no innervation from your spinal cord to your ears in any capacity. Listen. In case you're wondering. Listen, all I have is the word of D.D. Palmer and D.D. Palmer. It come from your your, 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 your skull, not your your back. There you go. In case you're wondering. So he healed. So we're all in agreement that it definitely healed a deaf man. Sounds like. (laughs) Sounds legit. Sounds legit. Sounds good. Uh, and he was also a big fan of alternative healing, and he was big into in opposition of vaccination. So all good things. Did they even when did when did vaccines come out? I don't know why I thought that. I mean, he founded it in eighteen ninety seven. Um, I don't remember if you didn't you know listen to our episode old. on vaccines. It was like eighteen sixty eight or something. Okay, I think. so uh, it was it was a, it was back when vaccines first started, right? Yeah. Okay. When was hold on. This is, I think it was like 1868 or something like that because I remember um, he got it from that uh, was like a cow cowpox. Yeah, cowpox. There you go. I can't get my and he was on like injecting screen. his neighbor with it. That's right. Is this little kid? Look, at John. <laughs> yep. John boy. He was like, "Don't tell your mommy." <laughs> That's right. Don't tell your mommy. I get it. It's just gonna be a little prick. <laughs> uh, I was saying in his defense. I mean, that's pretty early on though. I mean, it was like they just started doing this. Sure. It's not yeah. like, it yeah, have, like, yeah, yeah. Well, have this, like years of proof the way it does now. Yeah. You know I mean, so Edward. So I would say that being an anti vaxxer in 1887 or whatever, it's a little the same as being an anti vaxxer in 2020. 1796 you know I mean? was the first successful vaccine at first. So from cowpox. Years. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it had been out. There was more stuff than just that. But I understand. I mean, it is different uh, in some ways. Um, but he opened a, the first chiropractic school. He called it the Palmer School and Cure. Ooh. Then later got named Palmer College of Chiropractic. Um, so he came up with all these terms. Uh, let the nerve supply um, was was suffering from the spinal misalignment or what he called subluxation, and he wanted to reestablish the 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 nerve supply to your body, and that would help 
heal anything. Your body can heal itself. You just need to make sure it's aligned to do so, right? Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about um, osteopaths, right? Because I actually have a family member who is a DO, which is a doctor of osteopathy. And they actually have to learn some hands-on things similar to some spinal manipulations, but they also pass the medical board. And so they are licensed physicians, the same as a medical doctor. So they kind of do both. And they're kind of uh, not thrilled when uh, Palmer comes out with this because they're like, what the hell? Basically, just like making your own school of the shit that we already have an official, you know, medical degree for. And you're doing it on your own. And then you're going to start, as we'll see, calling yourselves doctors as well. And uh, actually, so lots of new chiropractors, including Palmer, went to jail for practicing this without a medical license, which, you know, they would later come up with their own. Um, so the difference would be, like I said, uh, DOs or doctors of osteopathy are actual doctors. Same to have to pass all medical boards, their license and very similar as a medical doctor. Um, they use traditional medicine and kind of a more whole body approach. And uh, they have to have at least 500 hours of manual medicine training. So like things where they, you know, move your knee, move your leg to see, you know, what, what the physical problem is with it, things like that. Um, and they can, you know, align, uh, line your back and, and those sort of things too, uh, but not to try to, you know, they're not going to crack your back to try to fix, you know, your, your deaf janitor, <laughs> right. as far as I know. <laughs> more of like a pt type yeah that's mm -hmm. what instead of like a chiropractor you're talking about like physically uh mobilizing joints and stuff mm -hmm. to see if there's any issues with the mechanism behind it right like they're yeah. not they're not twisting you around to fix it they're saying okay well it's not moving this way so it might be this is that yeah, what you're almost saying? like an ortho, ortho like an orthopedic kind of person you know gotcha. it's similar to that and um and that that would be like you're talking about more functional you know, movements and things like that to, to make sure everything's ship shape. So that's pretty much, oh, I was going to say one interesting thing, though, is my family member who is a DO when she was doing her training in school. Uh, she came home for like Thanksgiving or something. And I was I was a little stopped up, you know, I had some sinus buildup, sinus pressure. And she said, you know, you can if by by rubbing in certain places on your face, you can actually relieve some of that pressure. But, you know, and it, and it makes sense, like a mechanical way to do that, like if you have pinched sinuses that are holding back pressure, if you move it enough and you get that fluid moving and you can release it, then it can come out and you'll get relief. And she did it and like my nose just started running and it was like, Oh, crazy. Such wow. I can't do it to myself. I haven't been able to figure it out, but it, it worked. It was cool. Wow. Yeah. It's like, you know, you got to like pressure points and you're talking about. The... Well, it's like, it's other things like, you, you know, you want to, cause obviously your sinuses connect your ears and your nose. So it was something like where you have to, pull down below your ear so it stretches and then you pull along basically your cheekbone almost where your sinuses go just to kind of push that out and then it would kind of release it now it wouldn't it wouldn't completely you know decongest like a like a Sudafed would open it up but it would hopefully get some of that pressure relieved physically which is pretty cool I thought yeah that's cool yeah um so that's kind of like what a, a DO does versus a chiropractor so basically DOs would be accepted but there are accepted medical doctors. Probably if you drive through, if you look at your doctor's office you go to, if you look at the sign, you'll see MDs and DOs all there practicing together. It, and you probably didn't even know they're all doctors, you know. Uh, now, now here is one question. I know this is uh, getting sidetracked here a little bit, but what's the difference in a DDS and a DMD there, Birdman? Nothing. Nothing? There's no difference. No, it just depends on uh, what school you go to. Well, yeah, well, when when dental first came out uh, back in like dental dental colleges first started, I don't know, like late eighteen hundreds, probably about the same time as oh, this type of stuff. I believe uh, chiropractors could be older than dentists. I don't know; they may be, they may be. <laughs> oh, I'm sure the practice the, the of dentistry. The Palmer School of Cure, eighteen ninety seven. Boy, it's invented, close. Palmer invented chiropractic. That is true. So, so that's a we were I'm pulling sure, teeth I'm sure since barbers we were... and whatever were were pulling teeth before then. But, <laughs> that is true. Uh, <laughs> but Harvard and. Uh, University of Maryland both started dental schools uh, about the same year, and Harvard's degree for dental medicine was DMD, and Baltimore's was DDS. And so, as schools started popping up other places for this, they either stole Harvard's name or stole 
you know, and they, and they, uh, University of Maryland's name, and there's never been a consensus on what what's the what is a correct all the same name. Shit. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. exactly. Okay. So, I mean, so, but there's 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 no difference in the education whatsoever. So, yep. And you're a DHD, Doctor of Holistic, 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 holistic. Dentistry. That's okay. right. That'll D- be another doctor, episode. We'll have yes. to bring Birdman back about <laughs> holistic dentistry because I find it very pretty fascinating. Uh, different different story. All right, so we'll, we'll compare here basically what kind of training you have to do because obviously at the Palmer School and Cure or the Palmer Chiropractic later, uh, they came up with their own degree. It's called DC, and you'll see all your chiropractors have this, a doctor of chiropractor or chiropractic, doctor of chiropractic, there you go. So all these are going to be the same for DO and MD. Um, They're going to be identical except for the manual medicine training. We know it's over 500 hours. So for a DC, the chiropractic, they just need 90 hours of college credit, which would be what, about three years? Is that right? You could pull 15 a semester, I guess. Yeah, that's average. Not right. And uh, I found out that they do have very strict minimums. You have to have at least a 2.5 GPA. So, uh, John Boy, you could be in the running. Well, my, my GPA at the University of Phoenix was actually like a 3.8. So, fuck yeah. So, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think they, they probably have, you know, University of Phoenix probably has a DC program, I would <laughs> probably imagine. They have everything. Damn it, I'm already getting down the road of letting my biases show. I apologize, listeners. Okay. So, 90 college credit hours, at least a 2.5 GPA. Um, I don't think there's a minimum GPA f- to get into med school. I just think that you no, have to have a so. really, really good GPA, or uh, you yeah, have to I mean, be. No, I mean, I wouldn't think there's a minimum. It's GPA. more of like a market forces type uh, deal, right? right. And <clears> I did think that was interesting. So it's like you know, I, I and I don't know what what uh, conclusions you can draw from that, like to have a minimum GPA, because I guess there's a lot. Maybe they take more. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought it was interesting. <clears> I saw that. Um, this is this chart is from Boston Osteopathic Health, by the way. Uh, so. Graduate training, they say they do have a four-year chiropractic degree, um, similar to the medical degrees, four years. Uh, postgraduate training, none, whereas DOs and MDs can be up to eight years after they complete their medical degree. Um, licensure, um, obviously you can, DOs and MDs can do everything. Surgery, they can prescribe the full spectrum of all medications. And uh, DCs, uh, they can only do chiropractic manipulation. Uh, they can't prescribe medicines, and but as far as their manual medicine training, they have the same actually as a DO, at least 500 hours. I would think it would be more. I mean, shit, that's probably all they're doing, right? Right. Do they need so a uh, a license to um, sell alkaline water? or? I think it's required. <laughs> I think it's a uh, alka license. <laughs> no, we sell that at the pharmacy, man. Do you really? Of course. It's the, uh, what's that stuff called? It's like the pH water or whatever. Yeah. You haven't seen that? No. Uh, smart water. No, this isn't 8. smart water. 5. It's like, it's something to do with metals. It gets all the no. metals out of water. Uh, so let's talk about back and neck pain. Like you guys were talking about. Um, they, so from what we can understand, they chiropractic adjustments can be beneficial and at least short term for simple back and neck pain and recovery from sports type injuries. All right. Um, I will show later. There's some studies that prove that this is actually, this is true. Um, now, this is not in with any sort of regard to repeat treatments. This is just benefits over from the, the adjustment. There are all, obviously are risks, and there's also contraindications. So if you have a risk of a stroke, if you have any sort of bone abnormalities, cancers, osteoporosis, you don't want to go get this done because it's pretty violent from all the videos I watched. So they're just trying to improve. All right, so baseline of what, they sh- what chiropractors should do that's effective is improving your... In improving your body's function to and that will relieve pain so there's no magic to it it's just you know if you have a sports injury where you had something that went out of alignment or in pain they're gonna make you know a realign it it's basically like you're saying the massage sort of thing because we all believe that massages can have some benefit sure um, in making you feel better yes and that has benefit and they have physical <clears throat> recovery uh capacity as well you know yeah it, yeah, and that is true. That's a different sort of uh, idea as far as um, blood flow and uh, right. and I, you know there is some argument whether massages. This is a different topic, but <laughs> how how effective massages are on uh, you know with tight muscles and lactic acid, like how well they're able to sure. help clear that. But uh, it will make you feel better. And I mean, gosh, from seeing people, uh, they're all in on it. So you know, it'd be hard for me. I, I do want to do an episode on that. 
or at least look into it to see if an episode would be viable for quackery. So the, like we said, the, um, the remedy is called subluxation. So what subluxation is, it's a complete or partial dislocation of a joint or organ. So obviously in this case, it's going to be the spinal or joints. Organ? Uh, well, it's a, it's a medical term. So it's not, he didn't actually invent the term. So it actually has meaning. So yeah, an organ could be out of place. Organ? Yeah, like I a liver or a I'm kidney. I'm not going to the chiropractor because I think my liver's out of space. They're not. They're not working on. I just said the general medical, the med, general medical terminology for subluxation. Oh, so like is you, you would go to a doctor me- because you have subluxation of. Your sure, liver. my sister's like, heart was in the wrong place when she was born, so that would be a sub- subluxation okay. of her heart. They had to. I, she has a scar on her on her chest where they had to move it over, <clears throat> which is crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah, from what they taught us in pharmacy school, and I'm not sure. I didn't see. I don't, it's been so damn long. I don't have the, the evidence where they said, but basically what they taught us in pharmacy school was this subluxation, like moving it back in. A lot of times they'll take it out of alignment and put it back in so that it's like a better fit. Mm-hmm. But the problem with that is anytime you, so think about it like this. If you, if you dislocate your shoulder and you know, you see the people just pop it back in. Right. I mean, that's, that's legit. That would be a subluxation of, you know, your dub, you know, ball and socket joint of your shoulder and you put it back in, you're good to go. Well, the problem is when you pull it out in and out, that you're not it's not designed to do that. So the more you do it, you're wearing away the cartilage and bone there and making it easier for it to come out. So in that way, they were saying they're kind of self-serving if they pop joints out of alignment and put them back in, then they're maybe making it easier for it to come out and then you think, "Oh, I need to go back I need to go back and get it." Yeah. Uh, cuz I'm subluxed. <laughs> oh, but isn't that Hate like that's long-term damage? Do they do they know that's happening like that? I don't know as much with your spine how, like with it with it popping. I don't know if this is much space. Like I guarantee you that no one would ever recommend you dislocating your shoulder joint to pop it back in and make it feel better because that it's a very complicated. I, I don't understand the spine enough. Yeah, but that's what what they told us in school. So that was one of the reasons why. Like at the next thing is how often do you need to go? This is the main thing, right? You need to keep coming back. She said I need to go something even twice a week would mm-hmm. be preferred. Jeez. Twice a week? Oh, whoa. Yeah. Listen to this wow. shit. Okay. So I was poking well, around. It's your tax dollars. That's I don't right. care. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. Think about how tall you could be if you weren't jumping out of airplanes, man. You used know, to be 6'5, right? Well, I used to be taller. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm serious. You think so? Yeah. 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 I think I'm getting back there. I got an inversion table, which I wanted to ask Stretching you about. Stretching them out. <laughs> I'll have to look into those. I don't know. I always, yeah, I think my blood pressure must be too high to use those because I'm always like, my head's always like, oh, explode. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should get that looked at. <laughs> so they said low stress, healthy individuals may only need to come once per month. What? Where did you get this information from? This was from <laughs> an actual chiropractic site that was, was tell, like I Googled, how often do chiropractors recommend you come in? And the and the top hit, this is the top hit from a chiropractic clinic that has multiple locations. Jeez. They said low stress, healthy individuals may only need to come once per, per month. They said more complex individuals with multiple conditions or health issues may need to come every week. And I even saw a video of a, of a clinic. The guy flew in to a, somewhere in Texas and the guy for a whole week gave him twice daily adjustments. Twice a day. So are they saying that when it says low stress, healthy individuals may only need to come. Does this mean that totally healthy people, they're saying need to go to this? That's right. That's my interpretation. <laughs> they basically need to want to adjust the right. world. But if you start getting a little stressed out, you should probably go more often. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So that's that's one of the boogaboos here. Are we all right. complex individuals? This is true. I think so. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, You're not a simpleton. I'm not simple. I'm very complicated. No. I'll, not to skip ahead, and I'm not skipping it. Are we going to talk about like medicine's take on this, like doctors' take on this? Yeah. Okay. All right. I, yeah. I, I, I don't. All right. Then I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Well, I'll I want to try. I just want to make so, sure. You're you fine. know, you've, this is your first time on the podcast. Sure. What we like to do is we like to start with how it's legitimate and the history of it, and then move into where kind of they push it too far. Okay. And what people think about it, and, okay. and why it's quackery. All right. Can, all right. can uh, I just say, make sure? Can I say one thing? So, all right. Let's say like my back is completely misaligned. Mm-hmm. So you would want to go twice a week. That's what she was trying to do, twice a week until I get to a point where I'm walking straighter or whatever, you know, and then you go once a week and then once a month. That's what she wanted me to do. So, 
Yeah, I mean, that that's obviously, you'd be the person they would want twice a day, twice a week, you know, as often as possible. But I don't understand, so... But if, if you're, like, if you're, completely you're, missing... If you're, like, Forrest Gump, Forrest Gump yeah. your, your back's crooked as a question mark. <laughs> they can't fix it, though, after time. They keep cracking it, and then it just... Because it temporarily realigns, and then they keep doing it. Right, so if it's going to keep coming out, so I don't understand why adjustments would make it stay. Please don't contact this woman. <laughs> well, you can, you I can, also had an idea. You There's a, your spinal cord. Oh right. yeah, you can move it. Look, I just moved it. Now you, you guys, do you guys ever feel suspicious? Mind. You, you're all the, right. uh, around my age. <laughs> you guys remember this? getting tested for scoliosis when you were in school? Oh yeah. yeah, wasn't that shit weird? So you go into little this little walk. room, yeah. and then you got to pull your shirt up, yep. and then you got to act like you're diving, and while some old man is looking right behind you, feeling like, <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, y'all just had to take your shirt off? <laughs> I mean, I took my pants off, but they made me put them back on. <laughs> Come here, boy. <laughs> take them old Jimmy John job. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what's that episode of that show where like? The one kid didn't get. Oh, was it on uh, Always Sunny, where a uh, dude doesn't doesn't get uh, a, a sexually abused and he's disappointed with it, so he's like trying to come on to the coast. What's wrong now. with me? Like, look how. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's wrong with you? Is that not a cute kid? He was like fat. <laughs> oh, dude, and one, one other thing too, I want to get a beer before I forget. Um, there's this place. There's this place called the Joint. Have you heard of this? The Joint Chiropractic. Yeah. Charleston? So basically, yeah. you pay. And it's a franchise, but you pay, I think it was like 70 bucks a month we were paying when we were going. And then you can go once a week, you know anytime. That? You walk in, you scan your card, and then you go right back there, and he just cracks it. So it's, it's a like very, a chiropractic uh, planet fitness. It's very quick. You know, you, you're in and out in 10 minutes. And um, he has like your chart on the computer. Like a membership club. He's, that's what it is, yeah. Interesting. It's like 70 bucks. You scan your card, you walk back there, and he's just like, how you doing? Good. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Peep, pop, poop. And then, and then you can Bip, go pop, every poop. week. Yeah. It's and like then the big crew deal. of chiropractors. It is. Yeah, yeah. You come sliding <laughs> onto the table. <laughs> pop, pop. And then you're out of there. <laughs> and they say, No, I'm serious, man. John Just, Boy, we were doing as it we for told a... you last week, please keep your pants on <laughs> for the procedure. We were doing it for a while, Nicole and I. I mean, it was pretty decent, I guess. Just for, you know, your neck is tight. You just crack it. But mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean... Um, I mean, I don't really see if, you know, if that's what, you know, if you, if you want to spend your money on that, I don't think it's a, a huge waste. If it makes you feel better and you get yeah. some, I mean, that's why I don't, there's a lot of really defensive chiropractors because of some of the other things that they like to do. And that's the problem is when you get real defensive of the medical community. But well, well let's get to that. Okay. First, let's move, let's move in, 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 uh, in order here. So how much would a normal adjustment cost? Well, if you go to the joint, what seventy bucks a month? All you can eat. Yeah, I there believe hers. The one I was going to was like sixty. Oh, you can eat bone broth. Sixty an adjustment, something like that. Sixty dollars per adjustment, mm-hmm. and that and it's like I think you they pay, said that's like the average. 65. Yeah, so it's like twenty bucks more, and you can get deep needling and stuff, and you can. There's all these add-ons, and then some alkaline water. You it's need like to. Would you like your steak Oscar style? Right? <laughs> you need to rehydrate with alkaline water. You obviously. get the premium package, okay? <laughs> Let's be honest. All right, so they say between, well, obviously, as we've heard from Birdman and Marvin here, a lot of times your first sessions will be free. It's like Because they want to keep you coming back. Interesting. And their argument is, once you realize how good you feel, you're going to want to come for sure. more. That's and exactly what the guy I That's how you get my first hit. Said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How much I owe you, man? Nah, you'll be you back. You're awesome, man. Take this one. This is, a great, this is a great side note. So... There's this homeless man who always is riding his bicycle through our drive thru with no pants on. Well, he's got pants, but no underwear, and he sags down. So you're just riding, and you can see everything. Anyway, he's always out playing imaginary drums by the road, trying to get money. And uh, the other night, we leave work, and my technician is going to his truck, and he says, Hey, man, want to buy some white workout powder? <laughs> I said, Why did he ask me? I'm fat as fuck. I need some workout powder. <laughs> What do you think is in that? Even in my profession, you'll have guys <laughs> that run into the same shit. You know, you'll go, you'll go to a dentist office, and you'll go up, and they'll be selling some bullshit at the front of the yeah. Some whitening you know stuff. Well, even or... white, well, even whitening, I could understand because, like, I mean, like, at least whitening is a, you know, that's optional. Like when I, if I sell whitening, you know, first, this ain't gonna make your teeth healthier. Sure, you know what I'm saying I don't try to say that. 
Right. It's gonna make your teeth whiter because it will. Right. Do you want it? You can have it. If not, it's you know, and like it's it's not it's not a and, and I do make money off of it. Not a it's not a medicinal it's a very very low medicinal thing. thing. Just a service offer mm. to patients. You know sure. What I mean? If they want it, that's fine. If they don't, that's fine too. I don't really hustle it that much or anything. But like, uh, but you see, but I've seen other people that are very they'll they'll branch out into things that like very very overpriced. Uh, what about the electric toothbrushes, the UV and, lights, or whatever the blue lights? <laughs> those are uh, I haven't seen any medical support for that. Y'all wouldn't y'all wouldn't put that in your thing though, because it's you know no no. Well, I mean they also have. I uh, mean whitening's different. It's just you know bleach or whatever it is. Did a, so an it'll it'll work. Whitening, right? Yeah, it'll work. Yeah, I mean so, well, holistic. I mean uh, alkaline water. I mean, come on, man. Like, really? So this is it. Let's go into it. So the extracurriculars. So this shit had, did start with D.D. Dee Dee Palmer. So all the way from back when old D.D. Dee Dee oh. cured the deaf man. That wasn't, you know, that wasn't really an extracurricular. That was a benefit of the, the fixing the subluxation of the spine. Mm-hmm. Here, we're going to talk about not only that. So think. So all this stuff is going to be not only what... Beyond helping your back feel better and okay. neck, right? This will be all the the whole body benefits here, and a lot of this has to do with the old Chinese um, idea that the that there's meridians in your body, invisible or or so tiny that we haven't been able to identify them. They connect everything together, you know, like your chi and your you know everything's connected. Feng so shui, you, you, you feng shui, <laughs> feng shui, <laughs> sure. So most chiropractors believe that all this is at least somewhat true. Um, you're talking about like chakras chakras okay, yes gotcha. all that kind of stuff meridians chakras so that would be like what acupuncture would be based on so you know and that and we'll talk we can do another, another episode on acupuncture I don't know enough about it yet we're talking about chiropractor here this is just extra stuff so we'll start with headaches so headaches a lot of people real. go to <laughs> headaches <laughs> somebody punch that guy in the eye yeah. <laughs> am I being really the side of your face is that a real thing just, just one, one side, side? Yeah, I, no, that's I think weird. that's just more the, like a stroke. All right, so we're looking, guys, we're looking <laughs> yeah. at a picture here of different types of headaches. So tension, which feels Don't like sleep on the beach. Something <laughs> stuck, <Yeah. laughs> like a, like something's tight around your head. Sinus, yeah. obviously, sinus pressure in your nose. Cluster, just a one spot can be apparently punt if you get punched in the eye, <laughs> is what it looks like. And then migraine, it just shows like the face halfway red. Um, oh. I don't know. I haven't had a migraine. That is Anybody weird. have migraines here? No. Well, yeah, you know, migraines you... are, they're not headaches. They're very uh, localized or whatever. Uh, maybe that's what They what's... did determine that there is uh, inflammatory effect that, that causes oh, okay. migraines. So, like, they have some products in the pharmacy that are anti-inflammatory yeah. and, like, the triptans, which would be, like, you know, sumatriptan, imitrex, whatever, that are uh, work together. So, anyway, so most chiropractors believe that by manipulating the neck and obviously your back and spine, um, you can treat headaches, including migraines, um, and give you some relief. Of course, with repeated treatment. Now, here is a, um, from the European Journal of Neurology, they said that people with migraines sometimes seek a chiropractor for help, but a small study suggests that any pain relief they get might be placebo effect. When researchers pitted real chiropractic manipulation against a sham or like a fake version, they found they were both equally likely to ease patients' migraine pain. That's a pretty neat way of, of that's a neat study. You're going to see you know, a lot of That's a neat way to study that. That, um, that chiropractors like to... Um, like to sort of argue against a lot of these studies. But if you look at the fact that... Yeah, I would too if that's what I was doing for a living. <laughs> sure. If you look at the way they conducted a lot of these double-blind, peer-reviewed studies, they're pretty well done. And even I, I looked at... I'm going to base a lot of it on some um, meta data, meta um, analysis, which would be using a lot of really well-done studies. They they make certain search criteria... or. Yeah, criteria for the, the, the research, and then they have to throw out a certain number of research that doesn't meet their strict criteria. And we'll get to those results here shortly. So can I ask a question? Yeah. Do we really know what causes headaches? Like, obviously, okay, so you have tension, so you have a headache. Do we know why? Like, what's the mechanism behind that? The same for um, migraines. I know you said something about it was some sort of an inf- inflammatory issue. Like, there is, yeah. I, I, obviously, I we know what think... sinuses are primarily caused by as far as I know, you know, I think headaches are a little bit um, poorly understood. Yeah. Um, other than the obvious ones, John, what do you do? You know any or um, oh. John Boy, you know anything about that? 
No, well, I mean, well, well, the headaches are, it's one of, uh, there's a lot of unknowns about them. I mean, the ones that you talked about, like sinuses, they, they think that that's contributing to having some type of sinus issue. Uh, tension headaches are due to where you're straining your muscles. So like when you clench your, oh. when you, when you clench your jaw, the muscles that clench your jaw, they don't just around your jaw. They actually go all the way up to your head and connect to the top of your head, believe it or not. Like if you, mm. like if you, if you touch the top of your head, and bite oh, yeah. down. Let's all do it. Down, you can feel it. Flex a little bit, particularly oh, yeah. around your temple. Oh yeah, oh, you can definitely. feel it. But it actually connects all the way at the top of your head, which is kind of weird. So if you're clenching a lot, the idea is that you're having a tension headache because those muscles are overworked and they're causing your head to hurt or something. Mm. Oh, that cool. still doesn't make a lot of was sense that, to me. You know what that help I if you it, wear a mouthpiece? I don't know how that would hurt, make you have a true headache. I would think it'd be. Make yeah, sure. like I can you, see where at the top of your head would like be sore, but I don't know why. That if you go for a run, your legs don't. You don't get a leg ache. You just right. get tired legs, right? right or they exactly. cramp. But or, I, but know. yeah. So that's but that's the, that's their. But migraines and cluster headaches. I but think there's still a lot of unknowns. I mean, they're they legit. The they, they're real. People have migraines. Yeah, and neither it's real do those thing, muscles. But... <laughs> it's on the outside of your skull. It doesn't go in but the skull. You, but if you but if you're so you can put pressure on your brain. Like your skull is not. Uh, like you can you can get. I mean, some of these can be from pressure. You know, I mean, I'm not Within saying your brain's brain, getting though, right? squashed like a, a like the dude off of Game of Thrones, <laughs> <laughs> like that the, the the mountain, the mountain squashed the. the well, so like if you're in a if you're upside down, like in an inversion table, you'll get pressure on your brain, right? Because all the blood's going down there. Yeah, now that yeah. makes sense. I'm trying to sound smart. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, sense. that's what I'm saying. I mean. <laughs> You know, what, that's why if anyone else would have drilled a damn hole in their head, like I would have told them on the Trepanation episode, we wouldn't be having headaches. Well, the reason I ask the question, do we understand what headaches are? It's right. like, if you want to figure out how to, mm-hmm. to fix something, you really need to know what's it. causing it. That's a lot of problem with, with medicine. And that's a lot of, yes. that's what, that, that opens the door for hucksters. Well, it also opens the door. No, it also provides the legitimacy the of chiropractor because you're an MD doesn't know anything more about a headache than the chiropractor do, but they yet they both treat them. Mm-hmm. That's you know? right. Yeah. Yeah. If I get a headache, I'm not going to be like, like this thing but, says, oh, I got to go to the chiropractor. That's but, the last thing I'm thinking of. But they can, so we may not be able to understand what causes it, but we can do measurable results to see what helps it. Sure. And you're, so by you're, doing yes. that, that's science. That's right. that's yeah. my problem. So right. if you want to be legitimate, you need to, you need to follow the scientific method. Right. Yeah. In, in 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 medicine and so in and we'll see that that's they don't want to do it because as much because it's going to cost them money yeah right things so, have to be falsifiable in order to be a scientific theory there's there's a acronym for it right yeah um that that, that is part of it what, what is it scientific method applicable yeah. repeatable measurable some shit like that i don't know yeah um yeah Okay, so let's talk about this. You guys are going to love this. You may have never heard of it. Applied kinesiology. Has I've anyone heard, heard of this? No. It oh, sort yeah. of sounds like you guys had a little bit of this done to you when you had your first Cairo visit. All right, so I'll, here's the deal, to quote Joe Biden here. Here's the deal. <laughs> and this, I put a lot of information up here. This is everything about it. All right, let's just say this. You go to someone who practices applied kinesiology, and they'll say, okay, Lay down and hold out your arm. I'm going to perform a delta test. This is where you're going to try to push against me. I'm going to try to hold my arm where it is. And based on if you can move it, that means that you may have some sort of an issue or not. It could be good or bad. Does that have to do with your deltoid? No, no. Oh, okay. They're just their <laughs> delta <laughs> test. It's an okay. arm okay, pull down test. Like delta like the airline. So <laughs> these different weak okay. muscles in here could be, so this is what they call, you can get a weak response or or, or a strong response based on, but this, here's the thing, a person is pushing your arm. It's like, well, it only means that they're stronger than you. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty straightforward, right? Sure. So they use this to test, okay, what we would need, maybe need to work on. Like, oh, you're having weakness. If you can't push it down in these different ways, oh, that means you're having these imbalances and weaknesses here. And you are you have a prime mover muscle, and that's a dominant force that's causing issues. This is applied kinesiology. So um, there's it's also... Like those, it's kinda, that, that reminds me of those, like, 
those like uh, copper bands people yeah. used to wear. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> copper bands. Remember and like John's covering up his you wrist. Would, uh, you would, uh, you what are would, you talking uh, about? You would like pull you at the. At the you had one on? No. <laughs> you, you but I had one before. The, the Broadway yeah. at the beach and they'd be selling them to you and, mm-hmm. yeah. and they'd, they'd, they'd try to pull you over and but if somebody was wearing one they couldn't hear or something. Oh that yeah. Reminds me of that. Oh yeah. That's exactly <laughs> right. Okay, just making sure. And hold on, you have. I bet these guys sell those. No, this is that is exactly what it is because the next is called their nutrient testing okay. and the nutrient, nutrient testing, testing actually examines the muscles response to assorted chemicals cool i don't want to do that say, test so gustatory and olfactory stimulation so they said if you can like smell it or if it touches you and these different things your muscles will be weakened or strengthened by different chemical substances being put against your skin like hydraulic oh, like acid subdermal. Oh. So right. not, no, not like acid. I'm talking about like okay, if you're allergic to pollen, if you hold it in your hand, you're so they perform an alpha test. Then all of a sudden they can push your arm down. Oh shit! This is what's my problem. This I'm, makes sense. I had an experience with this actually. Well, sort of. Uh, a friend of mine went to a car, and this is totally him talking. I don't have any firsthand knowledge of this, but he told me he got diagnosed with cancer. Mm-hmm. Went to a car, and and. Uh, a friend of his just paid for the chiropractor session because he said, this guy is amazing. You're going through this legitimate cancer treatment. You need to go to him. And first thing the guy did was exactly what you're talking yes. about. Is he, he said, oh, and he made him like hold some crystals or mm. something in his hands to get the chemicals back into his skin or something. Yeah. To balance himself out or something. Mm-hmm. It sounds like he had the same thing and they may And they may have just done oh, straight my. crystal healing, which is a different thing we'll oh, have okay. to do. Never, okay. I don't know. Okay. There is a whole crystal hang on, thing. Hang on, I forgot to put the crystals in. Crystals? Yeah, you're throwing a, a loophole here. The crystals are a whole thing. And we'll have to talk about that <laughs> later. Well, um, you also have to watch the movie The Secret while you're doing ah, it. Ah, The <laughs> Secret. Yeah. The Law of Attraction. To fuel a time machine. That's true. As seen in Napoleon Dynamite. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Already tried it. Already tried it. Already tried it. <laughs> it doesn't work. Uh, so, yeah. So, basically, it would be like this. If you hold something like, let's say, there's not enough iron in your blood and you hold pure iron, then you're going to be able to pass that Delta test because it's bringing back what you need, something that's strengthening your muscle. How long does this take? I don't know. It's, it's, it you, sounds you, like they would you, probably take a long time. When you say if you hold time. iron, yeah. is, that like, is that a reference or are you just, are you just shooting the free That's channel? a for instance. Like actual, like they actually use iron because iron or, is strong and it will make you strong? Or no, are you just, are you just saying, are you using that as like a... No, so they're saying like, okay, so it's, there's, either, there's, either, awesome. there's either strengthening agents or or misbalancing substances. I've, or, I've or got an idea. Right? So if it's something you're allergic to, like oh, if you hold a gluten piece of bread and you're allergic to gluten, oh, you're going to be weak. Or if you, or if you, you're, there's not enough zinc in your blood and you hold, they have like a little zinc cube or something, you know, or whatever that looks like. I don't know. All right. Then I've, you'd be strong. I've got a theory. Interesting. I've got a theory. Huh. Okay. Is all the stuff they test on the weak side or the allergy side, is it all light? Oh, that's a good question. I don't and know. everything that makes you stronger is heavy because your body automatically like, try to pat your belly and rub your head at that's the same true. time. That's you, true. You're, so if they, you put something heavy in your left hand, you're probably going to be more likely to hmm. push up on your right hand, right? No, no. They're not testing the hand that's holding it. I know, but what I'm saying is it's the opposite it hand closed, is what I'm saying. No, they don't do both at the same time. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's so you like go back in the back room and play with some mercury and then go in there and they yeah, pick no, up your arm Yeah, no, I think they do again. do that. They'll put like mercury in your hand. Mercury might be that. a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> no big deal. Well, you're, not of, a kid, you're not a, a applied kid kinesiologist. Store. Store. <laughs> it's true. Applied you're not certified. I guess you probably don't need to be it's talking not about this. You're not a board certified not a, AK. applied kinesiologist. That's true. All right, so let's take a look here at what the, what the science says about it. They looked at it. They said a double-blind randomized study to assess the validity of applied kinesiology, AK, as a diagnostic tool and as a non-local proximity effect. So this research published uh, said that it uh, that applied kinesiology should not be relied upon, and the experimental studies do not meet accepted standards of science. It has not been deter- demonstrated that it is useful or reliable diagnostic tool upon which health decisions can be made. And the reason, the way they found this, so they did 151 sets of trials in which they had like the toxic vial versus the you know the good thing or whatever and in 80 percent or 80 of them so 53 percent so they blinded it to these applied kinesiologists or whatever right they did 53 percent that they they picked the right one and then for the next one so anyway they ultimately find out that it was almost exactly 
chance. Right. It was almost exactly 50% for them identifying what was good <laughs> and bad. Well, and let me chime in on a little something here, not to take away from that, but when you double blind clinical studies, what the, the goal of that is, is to eliminate bias mm -hmm. with the, with the tester, with people being evaluated. So basically the person administering the test and the person getting tested don't know which is happening. And that's right. the only way double blind clinical studies are the only way to eliminate bias in any test. If you look at a scientific study and it doesn't say double blind clinical study, it's probably bias. Right. Or has a very high chance of bias. And this is not bias. Right. So what they, they did really was did then so then you know that these these people performing it and the patients None of them know which is which. So, mm -hmm. so, and so then they have no way. Basically, the dude doesn't know whether to push hard on the arm or That's soft. Right. That's right. Let's be honest. Yes. Okay. So, well, let's get down to the nitty gritty here. Okay. So, we bring this up in the chiropractors episode. Maybe just How half of them are better than the other half. That could be true. That could be true. 50% <laughs> All that tells me is half of them are frauds. That could be right. <laughs> 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 Results for the two. Uh, no, <laughs> all Sorry. the groups. But can we test the scientific? Method though. Oh. How do we know the scientific method? It could be false. Is really not exactly. Right. Now you we're said about that. that. Can we yep. test that? Now you're getting down the rabbit hole. So, <laughs> do any chiropractors actually use this? Because this sounds crazy, right? I mean, I think we would all admit that this applied kinesiology or whatever is both is. Yeah, it doesn't even give you the like fringe benefits of a normal chiropractor that that'll rub you down. Right. <laughs> Which I think is the most the, important part of going yeah. to the chiropractor. The hand job. I mean, the hand, <laughs> hand. All right, folks. So this episode on chiropractic is uh, is getting heat, heating up here. He's heating All up. All right, ladies and gentlemen. He's heating up. This he's on fire. This episode is really getting heated. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cut it in half here. Okay. We want to make sure it's not too long so no one wants to listen. So stay tuned next week for part two of Understanding Chiropractic with Will the Pill, John Boy, Marvin, and Bird, Dr. Birdman. And uh, thanks for tuning in. <laughs>